Hey guys, I wanted to go over some ideas on how you can have students practice and retain new vocabulary. Um, I'm not a fan of front loading a ton of vocabulary and having students fill out a worksheet out of the glossary. I don't think they learn well that way. I know I don't. And so there's ways to tie it into your lessons and your discussions and your activities so they can see them continually and really get those words ingrained. Um, so. The first time that students see new vocabulary words in my room is when we take notes and have class discussions on a new topic. So say we're doing ecology and there's a lot of vocab there, right? Like autotroph, heterotroph, producer, consumer, herbivore, carnivore. So all of these words we will talk about and discuss as we're taking notes and that'll generally be the first time that they see the words. Now that doesn't mean that you can't do 5E and um, have those concepts, the students discover them, right? And that engage. But when we really dive into the words is when we take notes. Um, so as we go through a couple tips, um, point out prefix and suffix things that they might already know. So like hydro or um, troph and all those things, what do they mean? And so when they see those words again and again, those prefix suffixes, they can figure out what those words mean on their own. Um, also, as we go through, I will practice the words out loud with them. Um, I did it with middle school all the time, and then when I moved to high school, I thought these kids are going to be too cool to want to do chants with me, and they're not. They did it. They surprised me. Um, this is great for your ELL kids. They need that verbal practice. So what I will do when there's a new word up on the board, um, say like it's autotroph, I'll point at the board and I'll say, hey, who wants to try and pronounce this new word? And you'll get a couple kids that'll be brave and yell it out and sometimes they're right and sometimes they're wrong and I'll be like awesome this is how we pronounce it correctly autotroph and then I'll we'll go back and forth I'll point at me point at them so I'll go autotroph and then I point at them and they go autotroph 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 and we do that three or four times um, I think uh, besides the fact that your ELL kids just want their practice, your English speaking kids don't want to say it wrong later and sound silly and get laughed at. So the more practice, the better, and I promise you they'll do it. So try it. Try those chants. Try that practice. Um, also, notes. Uh, I have a whole blog post on why I'm a huge fan of Cornell notes and why I let students use notes on tests. So I can link to that in the description, but do not just have students take notes and then shove them in their binder and forget about them. You want to have activities where they get those notes out and reuse them. So bell work questions every day when students come in, I have questions from what we talked about the previous day or in the last note. So they have to get the notes out in order to answer the bell work questions. Um, when we do a new lab or activity and they're doing the pre-lab questions, I'll say, get out your notes. You need to have this information in order to do the pre-lab. Um, when we take tests, I let them use notes because first it encourages them to take good notes. Um, also, it makes your test better because you're not just asking recall questions like, what is, does autotroph mean? Now you can ask questions where they have to apply that information. And so um, just because they have notes doesn't mean that they're going to get an A on your test. You can ask deeper questions. Um, all right, so after notes, we can do labs and activities that um, will bring up those vocabulary words again so they can keep practicing. So we do review games a lot. I like card sorts. I love Tarsia puzzles. I make them um, where they arrange the triangles to line up the vocabulary word and the definition. Um, you can do electronic games like Kahoot, um, Quizlet, things like that, where they can keep seeing those words. Crossword puzzles, um, flippity.net is a great way where you can just type in your um, vocabulary words and definitions. It'll make a crossword puzzle for you in two seconds. It's really easy. So find activities where they can use those words again and again. And then also make the words visible in your room. I have a bulletin board right in the front of my room that says we are learning about and I change out the posters all the time if I can't if I don't have a poster on that topic I'll just make a slide in PowerPoint and print it out and staple it up um, you can do word walls you can do anchor charts but the more that the students see those words the more they will remember them if you have any other vocabulary tips and how you get students to remember vocabulary and practice uh, leave them in the comments I'd love to see them